So we have made it a little bit of a ways down from the Cedar Gate, and we are actually walking on the rail bed. So where I'm standing is where William Gillette's train tracks used to run. Now, uh, he was very practical when it came to designing the railroad on the property. So one of the things he wanted to make sure of was that the railroad was perfectly level. So what he did is William Gillette had this area blasted out. Why? Well, because we're in the middle of a hill right now. If you look to my right, you can see that there's a hill that goes pretty far down and you can see it goes well into the woods. And then if you look to my left, you can see um, that we are actually standing uh, underneath the level of where the park road is. So above my eye level is where uh, the park road is now. So what William Gillette did is he had this area blasted out to clear the space, to make it nice and level, and then he had the rock walls built on either side just to make sure that the walls were well supported and they weren't going to come caving down onto his rail bed. So we're going to make our way a little bit further down the track here and we're going to check out some bridges. Hey everybody, so I do have a little bit of a confession to make here. Uh, I've gotten us a little bit off track. Get it? It's another hilarious train joke. Okay, so uh, you take a look behind me, you can see a train bridge. So from where we were uh, just before this stop, the train would have just continued down the uh, railroad tracks and it would have uh, gone across this bridge. Now this bridge is here for a couple practical reasons. Number one, William Gillette wanted to make sure that railroad stayed level. Um, the other thing here is um, so before the railroad was built, William Gillette already had walking trails along the property, including the one that I'm on right now. So this was just a way to get above the walking trail. Um, it actually makes for some really nice scenery when you're going above this on the train. Um, and you can see um, that just as with the walls that we saw in the previous stop, that we have uh, walls on either side of the bridge underneath that are keeping uh, themselves well supported with the stonework there. So uh, we're going to make our way down to the next bridge, but this time we'll actually be standing on it. So we made it just down the trail from that bridge, and now we've made it to another bridge. Now it's significantly longer. Uh, this one is about 120 feet long, and it's here for a couple of reasons, um, all of which practical. First of all, uh, it's here because of the fact that uh, the area that is below us is low-lying land. So what that means is that if it gets really rainy, then that area gets a bit swampy and William Gillette didn't want to wash out the train tracks. Um, so by having the bridge come across, you avoid that. Plus, um, it's also helping to keep everything level, like we explained earlier. Um, the other thing is just aesthetically, it's cool. Uh, it's cool to be able to ride uh, on the train going down the bridge and being able to look at the swampy... Uh, wetlands that are underneath you, or even the drylands as we have right now. So we're going to head to the other end of this bridge. 